Transactional Analysis Part 1 Structural Analysis The transactional analysis was created by Eric Byrne, a Canadian-born psychiatrist. It is a way to explain human behavior. The theory is based on the ideas of Freud, but it is distinctly different. Byrne believed that insight in patient's personality could be better discovered by analyzing a patient's social transactions. The most important basic assumptions the transactional analysis makes are first, everyone is born okay. Second, every person has the ability to think. And third, Everyone is responsible for themselves, which means he or she decides on his or her own destiny and can also change such decisions. Related to the question why people think, act and interact as they do, Byrne found that the human brain works like a camcorder. It records all our feelings, thoughts and emotions which we tend to replay in our adult life. All that support the development of a consistent pattern of feeling and experience that is directly related to a corresponding pattern of behavior. So, what is a transaction? A transaction is the fundamental unit of social intercourse. That means a certain behavior or better response follows a stimulus. If two or more people encounter each other, sooner or later one of them will speak or give some other indication of acknowledging the presence of the others. Another person will then say or do something, which is in some way related to the stimulus. All backgrounds mentioned before, plus the consideration that a human is born as a biological being and a being of reason and moral, Byrne developed three ego states. Byrne understood that there exist three distinct states in all people. People change from one state to another in the course of their interactions. This change can be easily noticed by the manners, appearances, words, gestures and tones a person utters. The three distinct states called the ego states are the parent ego state, the adult ego state and the child ego state. The parent ego state is produced by the playback of recordings in the brain of unquestioned or imposed external events perceived by the person before his or her social development. This ego state consists of no's, don'ts or how to do's. In other words, this ego state consists of the thought concepts of life. The child ego state is the response the little person produced to what he or she saw, heard, felt and understood. In other words, this ego state may be considered the collection of felt concepts of life. The function of the adult ego state is to update both parent data and child data by continuous examination of these data with respect to actual reality. So, to summarize, basic principles of the parent state are self-made educational experiences which lead to own values and norms. These constitute the basis of our assessment of our moral judgments and living points. The basic principles of the adult state are the self-made learning experience, which leads to own strategies for the acquisition and processing of information. These are the basis of our factual, not emotionally colored judgments and decisions. The basis of the child ego state 
are the self-made experiences of satisfaction which lead to own strategies to acquire pleasure and avoid displeasure. These represent the basis of our emotionally colored actions and decisions. As you probably may assume, there are different characters which have different tendencies towards certain ego states. There are three examples which should help us to understand. A person with a strong tendency to the parental ego state can be characterized as programmatic oriented. He or she is used to give orders to others or could be mostly critical against others. If the adult's ego is more dominant, the person can be characterized as a matter of fact person, such like astrophysicists, for example. A person with a strong tendency to the child ego state can be called an emotional person. Typically, comedians are rather emotionally than one of other mentioned characteristics. The parent ego state can be divided into two functions. One part includes the nurturing side and can be soft, loving, warm and permission giving. This is called the nurturing parent ego state. It can also set limits in a healthy way. The other side of the parent ego state is called the critical parent. It is also sometimes called the prejudiced parent. This part of our personality contains the prejudged thoughts, feelings and beliefs that we learned from our parents. Some of these messages that we hold in our parent ego states can be helpful in living while other parent messages are not. It is useful for us to sort out what information we carry around in our hands so that we can keep the part that helps us in our lives and change the part that doesn't. The adult ego state is our data processing center. It is the part of our personality that can process data accurately, that sees, hears, thinks and can come up with solutions to problems based on the facts and not slowly on our prejudged thoughts or childlike emotions. The child ego state can also be divided into two parts. The free child ego state also referred to as the natural child and the adapted child ego state, which also contains the rebellious child ego state. The free child is the seat of spontaneous feelings and behavior. It is the side of us that experiences the world in a direct and immediate way. Our free child ego state can be playful, authentic, expressive and emotional. This, along with the adult, is the seat of creativity. Having good contact with our own free child is an essential ingredient for having an intimate relationship. When we adapt in ways that make us less in touch with our true selves or the free child, we decrease the amount of intimacy we are able to have in our lives. The adapted child, on the other hand, is the part of our personality that has learned to comply with the parental messages we received growing up. We all adapt in one way or another. Sometimes we are faced with parental messages that are restricting instead of complying with them. We rebel against them. This becomes our rebellious child ego state. This can be seen as an alternative to complying. However, it is still a response to the parent messages. And so it is a kind of adaptation on its own.